Hi everybody and welcome to my big backyard. As you can see, it is a pretty crappy day outside today. It is windy, it is rainy, and just cold and in general pretty disgusting. So we're not going to spend any time in the backyard today, but I thought I would do some fun indoor things. So let's check out some indoor gardening things that I can take care of. One of the things that I have in my house still is the cacti that I've grown from seed. All of these are really cool trichocereus mixes and things like that. And also I have the few that I grafted last year. So anyway, what I'm gonna do today is repot a lot of these seedlings. These take up a lot of space the way they are. And granted there's a whole ton in there and I won't necessarily be able to repot every single one of them and get them out of the way. But the idea is to clear this out and also to give these some better nutrition. Um, they've been in this soil for a while and they, I look at them and I just keep wondering, are they growing? I mean, these are almost a year old. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to repot them today into small two inch pots. If you step over here, I've got, not these, but I've got all of these two inch pots. I think these came in packs from the Dollar Tree and I probably ordered these on Amazon. We've got some, a little bit of bigger ones. Um, and I'm gonna use those to repot cactus seedlings. The other thing I have is I have three cactus cuttings that were gifted to me and I will also be potting them up as well. Now, another part of this experiment today is that I'm going to pant, pot these into cactus and succulent mix. I have two different kinds of cactus and succulent mix here that I've never used before. I have no idea how good or not good they are. I figure even if they aren't the best draining, they'll be good with these tiny pots because tiny pots like this dry out very, very, very quickly and seedling cactus can handle a little bit more moisture so that'll probably be better for them than if i were to use a total mineral mix or just rocks or something like that but we're going to check out these two mixes and to see how good they are the only cactus mix that i've used before has been the miracle grow and as many people know some people have had issues with miracle grow fungus gnats and it not being the quality that it used to be, a lot of times like it's a little bit too chunky with big pieces of bark, things like that. So um, we're just gonna check out these two and see what those are like. So let's get started. Okay, well the first thing that I want to show you is the difference between these two cactus and succulent mixes. This one over here on my left is the black gold succulent and cactus potting mix and if I pull up a handful and show you up close this has a ton of perlite in it like a ton this mix I can tell is going to drain really well it's fantastic um I'm not sure how perfect it's going to do and it's probably going to using a lot of this is going to scare me because all the white stuff all the perlite is really hard to um determine whether it's perlite or it's mealybugs. So I'm always a little bit antsy using white fine material in my cactus mixes, even though I do it anyway, because I'm always concerned about mealybugs. But this is what the black gold mix looks like. Um, and it should be good. Now over here on the other side, this is the Hoffman Organic potting mix. This is very organic. I'm pretty sure that most of this is a uh, peat material. I didn't actually read the bag when I bought it. I just bought two bags of um, cactus mix at a local garden center that I really like to go to. Um, and so this is much more organic than the other. But that could be a big help to me in the really tiny pots that I'm going to be using, which are gonna dry out really, really fast. In some cases that's good, and in some cases it's not. Now, because it's just how I am, I'm not gonna do a scientific test of this stuff. I'm gonna probably just mix together 
the two mixes. Yeah, why not? And um, we'll see what happens. Okay, well the first thing that I'm going to do today, instead of starting on the tiny seedlings, I'm going to pot up these little um, cacti that were gifted to me. These are cuttings. I'm gonna just dump them out right here so you can see what I've got. Um, I believe I've got a small bunny ear cactus, which is an opuntia. I believe this guy is a mammalaria of some kind. I do not know the variety. And this is also a different mammalaria type. Now, what I decided to do today actually is also at the same time, I'm going to repot a few of these little mammalarias. Some of these actually aren't even alive. They just never rooted in this mix that I have here. Um, I've got these two that I had rooted from cuttings and I have this little thimble cactus. And what I'm going to do is create an arrangement in this bonsai pot that I had. Now there was one plant still alive in this bonsai plant pot and it happened to be this tiny little bunny ears cactus, another one of these. So I'm gonna put that right back in here when I pot up all of these cuttings in here. So let's get started. Move these out of the way. I will be wearing a glove at least to pick up these things. Um, they can be spiny and the goclids on the bunny ears would not be pleasant. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is mix up this soil here and while it's slightly frowned upon, I mean, ooh, there's a big stick. The big stick was in the black gold. Although that, I'm sure that happens to every potting soil. So I'm gonna mix these two mixes together. It's approximately 50-50. Um, I'm also going to add, because this is going to be a planter and not just dry out really quick, a little bit more granular material. I have some of the material that was originally in that bonsai pot, and I'm just going to throw that back in here. It's um, larger chunks. There's some pumice in there and things like that. So I'll just take a handful of that and mix it right in just for a little bit more of a granular mix. Specifically, oops, I'm shaking the whole table and the camera. Okay, I'm gonna add a splash of water to this. I know most people would say don't moisten your soil when you're potting up cactus cuttings, but a little bit will make me able to fill the container better. I'll have a better comp amount idea of how much soil it takes if I can, um, moisten this just a bit so that it settles into the pot better. It's not going to be so moist that it hurts the cactuses that I'm planting. It's just a little bit damp. Another big stick. Don't need any big sticks. Scrape this up to the side. And get my pot. Let me go ahead and fill it up. Now that I have that pretty much full, I'm gonna move the green bit out of the way work on this cafeteria tray instead. So you can see I have my pot here. Um, the front of the pot is facing me. I'm not going to work backwards. I'm put my soil in there. I may need to add additional soil. Not really sure yet. 
And I'm going to start with the plants that have roots attached to them already because they need to be buried properly. So I have, I use a pair of forceps a lot for potting up cacti. So I'm going to tuck this little bunny ears cactus all the way in here and bury those roots that it already has really well. One of the cool things about the bunny ears cactus is that I found that it's actually cold hardy. I've had a bunny ears opuntia growing in my outdoor cactus garden for quite a while now and it's doing pretty well. Um, I'm gonna take this other plants. Let me, um, give me a second. I'm gonna use this other tray over here to be able to dump out soil from some of these other plants. I've gotta work, like I said, with the ones that may already have roots first. So I've got my thimble cactus here, which I'm going to dump out the soil. Get, let me get these little stones all the way out of the way. The stones I'm dumping out are actually chicken grit. Chicken grit makes a great top dressing for your cactus pots. It also works pretty well mixed into the soil. So the little thimble cactuses are um, not very, I mean, they're spiny, but the spines curve back on them. So they're not too difficult for me to work with my hands. So I'm just gonna take this one clump of them and put it in this front corner, I think. Like that. Bury that in there. The other little piece, this piece, I'm probably gonna pot that up separately, and there's a, there's a little third tiny one that I'm gonna pop in here with this. I think that these will be happier in here um, than they were before in their old homes. So I'll put this aside to pot separately. All right, now I'm gonna pull these guys out and see what I have here. These have not been potted very long. Let's see if I even have any roots on them. Yet yeah, there are very teeny roots here. They're not very big. So I'm just gonna set these down since they don't have a big, ooh, this one. This one has a bigger root system, I can tell as I try to pull it up, but it's still not huge. So that's another one I'll set aside here. And then we'll see what I have in here. Um, we've already established that this little guy, it does have a little root, so I might try to make it work. Um, there's roots on this one. That one has roots. These are things that I rooted from cuttings. This big one, it barely has roots. I think one of the issues was that this substrate that, I'm use, that I used here is too dry and too coarse. You can see how many stones are in there to get good rooting on cuttings. I mean, these have been in the pot for quite a while. And I think that they just needed a little bit more organic and a little bit more soil to them to get a good root system going. Um, but that's just gonna make it easier for me to put them in this pot here. So the next step, I'm going to just work with this. I'm gonna take my big Apuntia pad and I'm just gonna stick it in here. You don't really need to do much, but bury the bottom of the pad and so it will root itself from there. So stuck it there on the side. 
Um, since I can, I'm gonna work with my bigger cactuses first. So we have this mammillaria here, and as you can see, there are the beginnings of roots at the bottom of that, probably because of when it was originally cut, was, it's been a while. But I'm gonna settle it in here just a little bit. I don't want it to be just balanced on the top. Use the forceps and the spoon. The spoon is a great tool to use when you're potting up cactus. Um, it's very useful. And as I'm doing this, I'm noticing how shallow, there's about an inch of space here at the side of the pot. I'm going to need to add some additional soil to this pot. So um, why don't I grab a spoonful of that real quick, a scoop to work with. So let's just add a bit of soil here. I always make such a mess of this when I'm potting up cactus. Let's just pop this stuff into the middle and I'll just spread it out from there. Um, you always end up with soil all over your cactus spines and without a very good way to clean it off. So let me just set this down. Cacti sometimes take a very long time to root, but I'm hoping that with this particular soil mix, they will root better. The soil that works best for you for cactus is not just dependent on the fact that you're growing cactus and that they like um, a really good draining soil, but it's also dependent on your climate. Where do you live? Um, I've always used a really, really coarse mix before. I put, I've added a lot of perlite to it. And the reason that I did that is because I was really concerned that the humidity here where I live, and I live in Delaware, which is um, a zone seven growing zone, but it, I mean, as you can see by the first clip of this video, it's pouring here today. We have warm and humid summers here, and we have, well, in the winter, it's cold and humid outside, but I bring all these things inside for the winter, and it can be very, very, very dry for the winter. And I think that that's why a lot of my cacti don't do so well during that cold period, even though they're supposed to be dormant, I understand that it's just a little bit warm and a little bit dry in here for them, which is why I've actually kept some in the garage over the past few years. So here's my other new cactus. Um, I'm just gonna put him right next to this other one. I like the idea of kind of doing clusters of things, not just necessarily I want these things to have space to grow, but I don't want this to look too organized. I find sometimes I put things in planters like this in a way that everything looks like even and organized, and then it just doesn't look right. It's too straight, everything's too lined up. And that's just, stuff just doesn't look nice that way in the long run. So, um, pop this guy in here. Put some others around him. Now this one here, this baby here may be the same variety as this one right here, but there are some slight differences in the color of the spines. So I don't really know. The cooler and the more cactuses I have in here that are different, the more interesting that this mix will be as this grows. I think that this particular, um, planter due to the size of the cacti that are going in it has the potential to look really cool eventually if all of these grow and get to flowering size it's going to be pretty neat maybe 
We will see. Hmm. I'm not actually sure I like this arrangement. Hmm. Oops. Knock this guy sideways. I think I just need some stuff up into this other corner. You can't just have everything together. I feel like that was just too lined up with this. Maybe I want to put one here. Hmm. I'll go ahead and keep that back there where it was. Sometimes they can't even find the bottom of these. All right, that's the bottom. Just squish that right into there. Boom. Okay, well, I've planted it out. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the stone that I have, especially from this, I think I can take some of this and sprinkle this on top. It's kind of like a top dressing. The two stones that are mostly in this gray and black mix, the gray ones are something that was called soil perfector from Espoma, which is kind of like a manufactured stone stuff that you can buy bagged that's supposed to improve your soil condition and your drainage. I use that for top dressing. 
And the other thing is just some fish tank gravel that I had laying around. Um, they say that's not really the best thing to use, but mixed up with other things, it's fine. And I like having the gray or the black um, as my top dressing, as opposed to a color that shouts at you, because I want my cactuses to stand out against it. I don't want the top dressing to stand out as the main thing. So I will need to get myself some more of that soil perfector. I do really like the gray. Um, the other thing I like about this top dressing is that it's not white. And so I won't get this mixed up and won't think I have mealybugs. Everything should be fine. So there you have it. Let me turn this around so that you can see it from the front. Tip it up a little bit. So that is going to be this little arrangement. And now I'll get on with my other potting up. Okay, well it's time to start repotting. And as I was looking around, the first one I decided to repot was this one right here. Now this is a cactus that I grafted onto, oh, dang, I can never remember the name of this rootstock, but I grafted this cactus onto a different cactus rootstock to make it grow faster. It was a seedling, and you'll see that in my grafting experiment video. But as you can see by looking at the stem of this one, this rootstock isn't doing very well, and the plant itself has rooted itself into the ground. So I'm going to repot this one and probably degraft it at the same time. Degrafting a cactus is something that I've never done before, so um, that'll be an experiment. But let's just pull this guy out of the soil. As you can see, the root stock doesn't have anything on it. It doesn't even have any roots. The roots are actually all right here at the end of the plant itself where it attached to the ground, which is interesting because they grew out from here, it hit the ground and it made roots here and then it sent up a whole nother little plant from there. So I have a couple of plants here, so I'm probably gonna separate this a bit. Um, so in order to do this, I'm going to get a razor blade. I might have one lying around. Just give me a second. All right, so I have a brand new clean razor blade, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip this thing over, hold on to it, and kind of just cut this rootstock off of here. That was really easy. That rootstock didn't have any real hold on it. I assume it's all out of there. They do say it's possible that the rootstock would be still up here in the cactus. Then I'm going to cut this one off right here. And the reason I'm gonna cut it off here, well, is because I'm gonna make a couple different plants out of this. I'm gonna take this one at the bottom and plant this as its own plant. So if I cut this right here, um, and I'm gonna pot this like this, boop, this will shoot pups out and this will then grow on its own and it'll be fine. As far as what's going to happen to this, uh, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work out, but I'm going to plant it like this, plop, right in some soil. And I'm probably going to put both of these in the same pot. So let's quickly fill up our pot with some soil. Tamp this down a bit. Add a little bit 
more. Okay, um, let me grab the paintbrush real quick. So, with the paintbrush, I'm gonna brush this cactus off here, get the soil from the old pot off of that. And make sure that this is clean, no bugs or anything on it. And then I will be able to pop that, pop that, ugh, right into, this is silly, this pot. Right where it wanted to be rooted before. I'm gonna angle it just a little bit this way. it off I mean that rootstock this dried up shriveled thing wasn't doing anything for this cactus so now I'm going to take this piece here brush it off Let's look at the bottom. A lot of people would say, well, I really probably should let this dry and callus over. I mean, that would be the smart thing to do. But because I'm going to ignore this for a while once it's in the soil, I'm not going to water it or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in here and we'll just see what happens. I'm a risk taker, what can I say? The soil is a teeny bit moist, but I don't think it's moist to the point where I'm gonna rot the cactus by planting it right here. Just knocked off a pup or two. All right, so this repotting is complete. Um, that's what you got here. The Variety of cactus here, this is a Salinas cereus, and I'm not sure what variety it is because the seedlings all came from a Salinas cereus mix. Um, it's probably like a dogtail cactus or something. I don't really know. So on to the next one. All right, I'm gonna show you real quick now how I go about potting up seedlings. As you can see in this tiny little pot, or maybe you can't see because they're very, very small, there are seedlings here, 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 here. Um, they're Astrophytum seed seedlings, and they're about a year old, but they're very, very small. Probably partly because of the dryness of the soil that they're in. I really need to get them into a better soil mix. So what I'm gonna be doing is repotting seedlings, either individually or maybe even in pairs, into these small pots right here. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. First, I'm gonna fill up my little cup with soil okay so I've got a little pot for soil I get if I have anything big in the soil I pull that out I don't want anything big or chunky in here I want to be able to see my seedlings but I also want the soil to retain more moisture than the previous soil did um, now I'm going to use my little forceps here to pull out a seedling as you can see it's a tiny little seedling, but look at all the roots on this guy. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna just carefully take some of this uh, material out of here. And as you can see, plenty of root system on this tiny little cactus. So I'm gonna make myself, uh, I'm actually gonna take some of the soil back out of this little pot. I'm gonna put the soil in around it get those roots good and buried. So I'm gonna hold this guy right in here in the top level of the pot. I'm gonna hold it by the head of the cactus with these forceps here. Yeah. I want him to be nice and up and upright. I don't wanna squish him either. So, and then I'm gonna get some soil. And my soil is a little bit damp like you saw before but it's not wet at all. I'm gonna bury this guy in here. Press 
press the soil in good into this pot around him. I want him to have good soil contact. And I'm hoping for a, a spurt of decent growth from this guy once he's been repotted. So, there you go. Little baby astrophytum in a pot. I'm gonna label the pot just right on the pot with the marker. Um, that's the quickest, easiest way to label these guys. And that's it. That's how I'm gonna be potting up all my seedlings. I am not going to video all of that. That would be tedious and boring. So, um, I'll show you all of the work that I did today after I'm finished. Hi everybody, welcome back again. Um, yesterday I started this project where I was repotting cactus seedlings into little pots like this one, little two inch pots. Now, as I was working on that yesterday and getting my technique down, I thought today that I would go through some of these or at least one tray of these with you, simply so that you could see the tools that I used and the techniques that I'm using to do this. I mean, we're dealing with seedlings that are very, very small. So one of the tools that I use is these magnifying glasses. I have a, they have a big, thick magnifying lens and a little light. And I found that that is very helpful for seeing what I'm doing. So that's one thing that might be useful to you. I bet you could just use like reading glasses or something like that from the store if you wanted, but these have been very helpful to me. The other thing that is useful to have a small dish of clean water, um, as well as you'll see I use a paintbrush. I use the back end for poking holes and I use the front end for alcohol. Alcohol? Why alcohol? Because of mealybugs. As you're going through and inspecting your baby cactuses, you may find that there are mealybugs or at least signs that there could have been mealybugs. So I just dab a little alcohol on the spots on the cactus and then I immediately wash it off with water. I don't want to damage my cactus, but contact with alcohol will kill mealybugs. And so I've been treating any that I see any issues with, but with the alcohol. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this set up here and I'm just gonna film how I go through a tray of baby cacti, um, find the babies, clean them up, and pop them in teeny pots. So hold on and I will get set up. Okay, well the first thing that I do with a tray of baby cactus is that I'm going to pull the label from the side that I'm working on, set that aside, and then I'm going to go through and pull out all of the baby cactuses. For this, I need these crazy glasses that I showed you. Um, baby cactuses are really, really small. I also use my forceps to get them out not because they're prickly, but because they will reach deep in next to it, and this helps me capture the root of the cactus. If there's roots on these, I want the roots. So basically, I pull out a cactus, like this one right here, and I dust it off a little bit with my fingers, and then I slush it around in the water. Slushing it in the water um, helps get the roots all aligned, and it helps me get extra dirt off of it. And so then I have one baby cactus that's gonna be ready to go. I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna continue doing that until I've harvested all the baby cactuses from this little tray. Um, the soil around them can be stiff and a bit messy, but I'll just pull these baby cactuses. There's two. It sometimes might help to water the soil that the cactuses are in well before you're doing this. I didn't, I watered these the other day, but not since then. You wanna pick off any big chunks that are stuck to the roots. Three.
The other thing that I've learned while doing this is that I do not want to use core, cocoa core, to plant things, especially little teeny things. It might be okay in a pot with big, um, bigger cactus in there. However, in a pot like this, that core, those hairs for the core are everywhere. And they're just annoying to look at. It's kind of like the issue that I had with baby cactus and potentially using the black gold potting soil. The black gold cactus soil was great. I mean, it drains really well. But in that case, it's all the little white flecks in there, which would really bother me with baby cactus. I decided to use just the Hoffman soil for potting up my baby cactus. And the reason for that is there's a lot less white stuff in there. The pots are so small that I'm not really worried about saturating my cactus and um, killing them by too much water. The pots are small and they'll dry out very, very quickly. So that's not gonna be an issue. But seeing all of those little white flecks in there, I will never know whether I have a mealy problem or I have no problem. Now, another issue I have is that I wanna save every single itty bitty tiny cactus. I mean, some of these things are so small. This one does have a root attached, so it's going in the save pile. Um, there was one here. This is a tiny little desiccated husk. I need to learn to throw these things away. There's no point in keeping a bunch of cactuses that aren't going to grow. So let me do a last scan of this side of the tray. There was, I'm only doing the cactuses that are on this side. There were two different varieties packed, packed in this separated container. So I see no more baby cactus in here. So I'm gonna set the tray aside and work on the next step. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven baby cactus here. So what I'm gonna do, seven baby cactus to me is gonna be two pots. So I'm gonna pull two flower pots from my stack of tiny pots. And I'm gonna label them carefully with the label that's on here. These are long labels. This, I can't even pronounce all of it. This is Rosa California. Slash Schonsti, I can't pronounce it, it's probably German. S C H O with the little dots. N S T E slash Freya F R E Y A cross like an X K A I. It's, this is a um, Trichocereus hybrid that I got as a seed from Patrick Knoll, who is in Germany. He's a breeder of hybrid Trichocereus. So they should be really cool when they bloom. They each, has, they each have a number identifying them as well, but I think these numbers were from the breeder itself. This says PNO, which I think is probably from Patrick Knoll, 2020, that's probably the year. And 0133, that might have been like his 133rd batch of seeds this year, I have no idea. But that's um, how his cactus seeds came labeled, and at least to the best of my ability, I copied it, and that is how I'm going to label the pots. I wanna keep really good track of what I have here, that way I know what I've got. So, all right, they're both labeled. The other cool thing about labeling them all really well and keeping track of what I have is that I can actually report back to the breeder of the cactus, Patrick Knoll, exactly how they turned out. And it probably is gonna take me, let's see, these seedlings are almost a year old and you can see that they're the size of pinheads. So they say cactus flower at two to three years, but unless they do some extreme growing between now and then, um, I don't see them flowering in three years, 
Cactus is a long-term project if you're going to grow them from seed and they can take quite a while to get going. So what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to take these and pot them up in these two pots. So I'm just going to pack the pots full of soil. I pack it in pretty well. I don't want it to settle down. Um, yes, the soil looks really organic. It kind of is for cactus soil. It, there is a lot of organics in this, but because I just have seedlings and they could handle a little bit of moisture and because they're such tiny pots, like I said, they'll dry out quickly and it's not going to be a big deal. What I do have to do is make sure that any of the big chunks, little pieces of bark and things, you always find little bits of bark in your potting soil. And I do have to make sure that I pick them out. They're just gonna get in the way as I try to plant the seeds. Um, so there's one right there, chunk of bark. So a spoon is another important tool that I use when planting cactus. Okay, so the next step, now that my little seedlings have been washed off and cleaned, and I have these cups ready. These seedlings look clean. I don't see any little white spots on them. Nothing that looks like it's potentially a mealybug. So I'm not gonna worry about the alcohol step. I'm just gonna put a little hole. I use the end of the paintbrush to put a little hole in the soil. And the point of that is that some of these seedlings, let's pull one up, have decently long roots attached to them. And oops, there we go. And I want to get that root down in the hole. I don't want it to be sticking out too far. So I'm going to use well, my fingers in this case to pick it back up off of here. I'll pick it up with a paintbrush. And I'm just going to poke the root down into the hole with a paintbrush and pack the soil in around it. I mean, this is something that's very hard to see. It's really small. I'm still wearing the crazy glasses, which I don't think you can see that either because the camera's aimed at the table. Um, but I'm gonna put three seedlings in each pot. Actually, one of these pots is gonna have four seedlings because I have an extra, but that's definitely gonna, there's plenty of space in these pots for four cactus seedlings. I have some small other pots where they were smaller, even the seedlings were smaller and I, plant, I put like seven or eight little seedlings in a pot like this. Um, you do what you gotta do. Either way, as long as they're in better soil than they were in before and the transplant will be good for them. It's gonna help them to grow. My intention is to actually keep these out on my deck this summer instead of indoors under the grow light. So these guys are going to get sunshine if it ever warms up outside. It's in the 50s today, it rained all day yesterday, as you saw in the um, beginning of this video. So there's the first pot, four little seedlings. I'm gonna go ahead and do this second pot here. I've got three left. So actually I'm wondering, there's one right here. So I think I actually have four left. There's a tiny little one still over here. So take this one first. Pop it in there, pack the soil in around it so that the root has contact. One thing you don't want to do is don't touch the seedling with your finger. And it's not because the seedling is going to hurt you or anything like that. They're not sharp enough to hurt you. But sometimes when you're, if you go, oh, I'm going to press this down into the soil with your finger, it'll stick to your finger and come right back out of the soil. It defeats the purpose. I've been using these little plastic plant tags to give it a little press down it's not gonna stick to that. So that's another thing I learned from doing this is to be careful about that. Um, oops. They're very tiny and very hard to work with, but it's worth it. These seedlings aren't, aren't much bigger than the, they were when I did the grafting project with some of them. Now, I may go ahead and graft more of these this summer, but for now, I felt it was just more important to go ahead, oops, I just dropped that one there, and 
This is what happens when you're trying to use forceps with your left hand and you're a right handy. There we go. It's more important to get these things potted up and in a good new situation than it is to worry about grafting any right this second. Um, my grafting rootstock, Periscopsis, is what I've been using. Um, wasn't well cared for this winter. I mean, it's alive, but it's dry and kind of desiccated, and it needs a little bit of time before I can regraft anything. So there you go. I hope this demonstration of how I actually transplant and work with these tiny seedlings was helpful. Um, like I said, I was working on this all yesterday afternoon, and I've been working on it th all morning this morning, and I realized that my technique had, once it was established, I really, really ought to show you what I was doing because it might help. Anyway, thanks for watching and continue, stay online here and wait till the end of the video and I'll be showing you the end results of all the work that I've been doing. Okay, welcome back. This is your final view of all of the seedlings that I have repotted. So, I tried to group them by variety. This tray is all various mixes of seeds that I bought from places and some open pollinated ones where I've collected the seeds from my own cactus. And um, that also applies to this tray, although here we have three of the cactuses that I successfully, I'm sorry, four of the cactuses that I successfully grafted last year all of which have counterparts that were not grafted. And over here we have all the fancy Trichocereus hybrids that I bought as seeds and planted and three of the grafts that were successful from those. So as you can see there are hundreds of cactus seedlings here, hundreds, and it took a really long time to repot them and hopefully they will do well in their new pots. I intend to pour water in these trays and bottom water to get these things when I water them and hopefully, hopefully they stay happy. We'll see what happens. Now, at the same time as I was potting these up, I did select quite a few down here. These are ones or things that I potted up that I'm going to be giving away at a plant swap or something like that. These are the ones that I was just like, oh my God, I have too many, especially ones where I know the variety. So they're all gonna be the same, but I tried to be um, fairly generous with my little seedlings here, which will all become part of a local plant swap. Maybe some other people will get into cacti. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little tutorial about how to repot cactus seedlings and the view of all of the cool seedlings that I have. Um, I obviously have a mess to clean up. Thank you all and have a great day.